Okay, in this episode, I would like to compare and contrast the concepts of septicemia versus bacteremia and systemic inflammatory response syndrome and sepsis, as well as the severe forms, which are severe sepsis and its differentials, which include septic shock, refractory septic shock, and this condition called MODS or multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. And at the end, I would like to briefly discuss two commonly used grading systems in sepsis, namely pyro and quick SOFA or sequential organ failure assessment score. At the beginning, we need to differentiate the terms bacteremia and septicemia. What is exactly the difference? Even though it is not of huge clinical significance, you need to know bacteremia it simply means presence of bacteria in blood while septicemia not only includes bacteremia, but also includes the presence of bacterial toxins in blood. Remember, presence of bacteremia and septicemia does not per se indicate any type of clinical syndrome. Now, what is SIRS or systemic inflammatory response syndrome? Remember, we have these vital signs and leukocyte criteria for defining SIRS, but before we go through them, I want you to remember that at least two of these vital signs or leukocyte count criteria should be present for diagnosis of SIRS. Also remember that for the definition of SIRS, we do not include blood pressure abnormalities. Do you know why? Because that vital sign comes handy when we want to define septic shock. Okay, so one point about temperature. Remember, high or low temperature, either one of them would be acceptable. Temperature of more than 38 degrees centigrade or less than 36 degrees centigrade for the definition of fever and hypothermia respectively. Now, what are the respiratory criteria? Either tachypnea defined as respiratory rate greater than 24 breaths per minute, or please remember this one, PaCO2 in ABG assessment of less than 32 millimeter mercury, regardless of respiratory rate. What's the tachycardia requirement for SIRS? While in cardiology, tachycardia is defined as any heart rate greater than or equal 100 beats per minute. For SIRS, we define a heart rate greater than 90 beats per minute as a criteria for fulfilling the SIRS requirement. And white BC changes, similar to temperature, either high or low white BC count would be considered leukocytosis of more than 12,000 per microliter or leukopenia that's less than 4,000 white BCs per microliter. However, please remember this bandemia, if the patient has more than 10% bands Regardless of white BC count, we still consider it as a criteria. Now, true or false, SIRS is always due to infectious etiology. That is false. SIRS may have non-infectious etiology such as inflammation, etc. Why this is important? Because only the type of SIRS that has a proven or suspected microbial or infectious etiology is called sepsis. Okay, that is the first differential. Differentiation between bacteremia, septicemia, SIRS, and sepsis. Let's move on to the next tier differential, which is severe sepsis, septic shock, refractory septic shock, and multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. What's the simple definition of severe sepsis? It is a condition inclusive of inclusive of sepsis plus one or more sign or symptoms related to sepsis induced organ dysfunction. Alternative diagnosis of severe sepsis is a patient with sepsis who has a lactate greater than four millimole per liter. Now what's definition of septic shock? While the initial components may seem obvious and that's a patient in sepsis who has low blood pressure. Definition of septic shock is a little bit more specific than that, especially when we think how to differentiate it from severe sepsis. Please remember, not only sepsis and low blood pressure 
is required, but also the patient should have failed to respond to adequate fluid resuscitation for at least one hour, or the patient requiring vasopressors to maintain systolic pressure of greater than 90. Also remember an alternative diagnosis, for example, in hypertensive patients whose systolic blood pressure may be significantly higher than 90, is that if a patient's systolic blood pressure is 40 millimeter mercury less than their normal blood pressure, and again fails to respond to adequate fluid resuscitation or requires vasopressors, this patient is in septic shock. The third definition of septic shock is with consideration of mean arterial pressure. If mean arterial pressure drops to values less than 70 millimeter mercury after 30 to 60 minutes of adequate resuscitation, this patient is also is in septic shock if he meets other criteria for sepsis. By the way, what is the definition of adequate resuscitation that is 30 milliliter per kg crystalloid fluids given usually as a bolus within one to three hours. Now to make things even more complicated, how do we differentiate refractory septic shock from just simple septic shock? Refractory septic shock, as the name indicates, is the one that fails to respond to adequate fluid therapy or pressors for more than one hour. Put it simple, if a patient is in septic shock and the condition lasts more than one hour for any reason, or if the patient in septic shock fails to respond to pressors, that's definition of refractory septic shock. Then finally, we have the multiple organ dysfunction syndrome or MUDS. What is the definition of MUDS? Any patient who has dysfunction of more than one organ who requires intervention to maintain homeostasis and clinical stability is said to be in MODS. Okay, now let's review some couple grading systems in sepsis, including pyro and SOFA. What is pyro? It's predisposition infection response organ dysfunction grading system. It's a system mainly used in clinical trials and research to stratify patients. Again, the four factors that are used are predisposition, infection, response, and organ dysfunction. However, a more clinical relevant and widely used grading system in sepsis is quick SOFA, that is quick assessment of sepsis with repeated lactate measurement or clinical assessment of organ failure. SOFA stands for Sequential Organ Failure Assessment Score. With that in mind, let's review some cases and see if these fit the category of simple sepsis or severe sepsis or septic shock or severe and refractory septic shock. So you have a patient with evidence of SIRS and infection. That means he already meets the criteria for sepsis definition. Now, if this patient has systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeter mercury or mean arterial pressure less than 70 millimeter mercury that responds to fluid resuscitation, what is the diagnostic term used for this patient's condition? Given the fact that this patient is fluid responsive, his or her condition is simply called sepsis with severe features. In other words, severe sepsis. Pay attention to the fact that mere presence of low blood pressure, as long as it is responsive to fluid resuscitation, is not diagnostic of septic shock. Now, we have a patient in sepsis whose urine output is less than 0.5 milliliter per kg per hour, despite adequate fluid resuscitation. True or false, this patient is in septic shock. That is false. While response of blood pressure to fluid resuscitation helps defining septic shock, uh, urine output failure to meet the goal does not meet septic shock. This patient is simply in severe sepsis. Now, a patient in sepsis has PaCO2 of 25. True or false, this patient is most likely in septic shock. 
Well, based on the information provided, we cannot necessarily say the patient is in sepsis, even set aside septic shock, because remember, a uh, required criteria for SIRS is PACO2 less than 32. This patient may just have SIRS. However, if there is evidence of acidosis beyond PACO2 less than 25, for example, if lactate is more than 4 millimol, and if the patient has clear evidence of hypoxemia, then we can say the patient is in severe sepsis. Now, what is the index used for assessment of hypoxia or acute lung injury in sepsis? That is P2F ratio, PaO2 to FiO2, and the cutoff points are usually less than 200. Mainly for ARDS, if P2F ratio is less than 200 or for simple acute lung injury, if P2F ratio is less than 300, it's considered diagnostic. If a patient has these findings, this indicates presence of severe sepsis because the patient has an organ failure. If a patient meets the criteria of sepsis and his or her platelet count is less than 80,000 per microliter, what is the definition? This patient again has evidence of organ failure, therefore he is in severe sepsis at least. True or false, presence of metabolic acidosis per se is not enough criteria for diagnosis of severe sepsis or septic shock. That is false, while shock mainly focuses on response of blood pressure to fluid resuscitation, severe sepsis has its own definition in regard to acidosis. What are they? If a patient pH is less than 7.30, or if the patient has more than 5 ml equivalent per liter base deficit, or if a patient has a plasma lactate level more than 1.5 times upper limit of normal, or as we mentioned, more than 4 millimole per liter, this patient meets the acidotic criteria for severe sepsis. So, so far we have discussed the organs including cardiovascular, renal, respiratory, hematologic, as well as at acidosis for the criteria of severe sepsis. One final question regarding adequacy of fluid resuscitation. I initially mentioned that definition of fluid resuscitation is 30 milliliter per kg of crystalloid fluid commonly delivered in a bolus within three hours. But how do we measure the adequate response to fluid resuscitation clinically? We measure the pulmonary arterial wedge pressure or central venous pressure. Remember, the pulmonary arterial wedge pressure of at least 12 or CVP of at least 8 indicates adequacy of fluid resuscitation. You can feel free to add these values to the values of mean arterial pressure of 70 or systolic blood pressure of 90 that if a patient fails to demonstrate these minimum standards or goals of fluid resuscitation, then we can consider this patient to be in septic shock. And this finishes our differential diagnosis and some cases to review SIRS, sepsis, septic shock, and MODS, as well as some grading systems in sepsis.